you guys are here. We started off this series last week by talking about how the Bible helps us get to know God better. And this week, we are continuing to look at the Bible and continuing to look at different things. But before that, I actually have a quick story I want to tell you guys. So this story is about a guy. And this guy went to, he went to a village, let's say. And he decided that, oh, the drinking water here is really, really bad. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to make it better. And all of a sudden, the drinking water got better. So people aren't dying. Relatively good guy, right? What'd you guys say? Pretty decent fella. And then what happened next? All right, so get this. This guy left that town, and he was on his way to the next town. And out of nowhere, some of these boys, these punk kids, are saying, are just like, ah, you're bald. Baldy, get out of here, baldy. Literally what they were saying. So guess what this nice guy did? This dude called a curse on them and sent two bears to maul them and killed the 42 boys. That's great, right? So fun fact about that story, that story is actually in the Bible. Yeah, some dude named Elisha in 2 Kings... He was getting made fun of, literally for being bald. And he sent two bears to maul these 42 boys. That's crazy, right? That's in the Bible. It actually is there. It happened. Chaos. So as we're thinking about the Bible, as we think about everything that's going on in the Bible, we look at some of the verses that are there, and they're crazy. Like, in Revelations 8.1, it says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Do you guys have any idea what that means? No, I didn't think so. That's okay. I, I don't know if I do either. Then there's, like, crazy stories, like the dude getting, like, mauling them with a bear or some dude tying foxes' tails together and then lighting them on fire because he couldn't get married. Yeah, that's in there too. That's in Judges. Judges 14 and 15, that's where that crazy story is. Second Kings 2 is where the first crazy story is. And then there's also like these weird commands. These really weird commands like for people not to wear clothes that are made of two different kinds of material. Does anybody here ever not wear a cotton polyester blend? You're probably wearing them now. It's okay. But... There's a big disconnect when it comes to the way that we're told about the Bible and how we actually experience it when we read it for ourselves. And that kind of leaves us with the question of, is there something in here that we're missing? Is there a different way to do this when it comes to how we read the Bible and how we understand it? And what kind of benefit would it be if there was a way for it to actually be explained to us? There's that title. See that? Look at that bit there. So the good news is that there is actually a way forward for us to have a better understanding of the Bible, for us to understand the Bible in the way that it's meant to be understood. And we're just going to start right with the basics right here. So there are two halves of the Bible, the Old and New Testament. One of them is before the coming of Jesus. The other one is everything that happened after the coming of Jesus. There are 66 different documents that have come together to form this massive book. It is a massive book, even if it doesn't appear that large. And they're from all kinds of different authors and all kinds of different types of writing. We have poetry, we have history, we have songs, we just have stories. There's all these different ways in which we understand and can read the Bible. When we read the Bible, we're reading all of these different documents, but we're missing one huge piece when it comes to what we're understanding. If you were just to go out there or pull out your little pocket supercomputer and open up the Bible app and just pick a random verse, 
chances are you're going to read it and maybe not understand what it's saying because you're missing the context. When you don't understand the context, you're not understanding maybe the specific group of people that this is written to or the pieces of wise advice a father wrote down to his son or how it's a song that's written to God. Or maybe it's just the eyewitness account of something that happened when these people were hanging out with Jesus. Context matters. It matters in how we not only understand the Bible, but also matters in how we live out our own lives in the way that we interact with our friends. So there's a verse that I want to look at real quick right now and kind of look at this in the context. So this is in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, and when you come, for he will be helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychius to Ephesus. When you come, be sure to bring my coat. I, lift, I left with Carpus at Troas. Also bring my books, especially my papers. So there's a couple things that we need to know about 2 Timothy. It's called 2 Timothy first because it's actually the person that the book is being written to. So Timothy is the person that is receiving these letters from a guy named Paul. Paul is a close mentor and friend of Timothy's. And Timothy was a pastor in the church of Ephesus. And it was a church that was dealing with all kinds of struggling people. There were major struggles going on at this time. So Paul was writing these letters to Timothy so he could help him get through these tough times. So thinking about the context of that, you're just reading a letter that is taking place between two friends, one who is trying to help one another, and he, is, he just wants his coat. This guy just wants his, wants his friend to bring his coat to him. He wants him to bring his papers so he can be ready for what is coming. So sometimes when you understand the context of that, you just see that these guys are or were normal people. They were people with friends. They were people with struggles. They were just people. There's a second verse that probably if you follow athletics in any possible way, you have seen this verse tattooed on somebody's arm or written on somebody's shoe or anything along those lines. And it's Philippians 4.13. Does anybody know that off the top of their head? For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Does that mean that Ryan can dunk a 10 foot, on a 10-foot hoop? Ryan, how tall are you? 5'7". He's, be, he's being real generous. It's okay. So by Ryan saying that, does that mean that he can automatically dunk? No. Does it mean that I can go into your Spanish class and immediately pass a Spanish test? Absolutely not. Donde esta la biblioteca? See, exactly. That's all I know. That is literally the only thing I know in Spanish. Maybe it is that you guys might be able to actually find a date this year because God gives you strength. I don't know. That's weird. But with no context, this sounds like just a formula for how we're going to go about living out our dreams. With no context, we don't really understand what is going on here or really how this impacts our lives. This is also a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul, but this time it was to, I guess, specifically an entire church. Imagine if one of our small group leaders one of these random adults, and Ian, moved to take, to take a job in another state and wrote to one of you a letter to be read out loud at youth group. That's the idea of this letter. The idea is that this letter is meant to be read to the entire church so that they can see and hear the possible solutions to what is going on in that congregation. 
So what this section is really about, what this verse is really about, is about contentment. And Paul is letting them know that he has figured out how to be peaceful and content with life. That's not a really easy thing to figure out. Chances are there are some of you in this room that have no idea what it means to find peace in your life or what it means to be content. Maybe you have all of these struggles, maybe you have all of these emotions or anger that is welling up inside of you, and you have no idea how to find that, how to fix that. Paul is saying that no matter how good or bad your life gets, when you find contentment and peace in Christ, that is when you can do all things. Through the internal struggles, through the internal angers and frustrations that you are dealing with. Paul was so dependent on Christ because his close relationship with Jesus gave him the power to overcome all of these incredibly difficult situations that he had to persevere through. It didn't mean that it was any easier for him, but it was because his relationship with Christ was so strong that he was able to endure and stay tough through everything that was going on. So the point of that verse is not to say that Tim Tebow is going to be the greatest quarterback in the world because he put that on his shoes. He was not a good quarterback. But it's to say that when we have peace and contentment in Christ, that we can overcome the adversities that we face internally. And when we understand the context of that passage, we then actually receive clarity where it is in our lives. And that's the point that I want to get through to you guys tonight when it comes to how you read the Bible, is that context creates clarity. If we just open up that Bible and read some random verse, it's not going to mean anywhere near as much to you when you understand what the purpose of that verse is. It's like if you're walking down the hall and you find a random note on the ground. I don't know, does anybody still write notes in school? No? Old, you guys text. So let's say theoretically somebody wrote a note in school and you found it on the ground and it said, quit acting like a bully. I already said that I'm sorry. Why can't you just drop it? Would your first thought be, wait, am I acting like a bully to somebody? Does this note apply directly to what I'm doing in my life? No. You would actually understand that this note was written in the context of one friend to another about a specific situation. Because with that background, with that knowledge, you're going to have a better understanding not only of that situation, but with that background and knowledge, you have a better understanding of the Bible. If the point of the Bible is to get to know God better, it's too important to just know what's going on in the Bible. We have to actually know why that was written about in the Bible. So there are four questions that can help you better understand the context of what you're reading in the Bible. First one is, who wrote it and who was it written to? So when you understand who wrote it, which you actually might not know who wrote that book of the Bible. There's debates out there. But when you have an idea of who wrote it, you better understand their personality. If you have two friends, and each of them have wildly different personalities, and they both wrote you the same note, you're going to read that in a different context. Number two, why was it written down? There was a reason that things are written down. There is a reason that you guys text instead of talk face to face. Second Timothy was written to encourage a friend in his leadership as a Christian. Philippians was written to remind a group of people that they were loved by God. Understanding that as to why it was written gives you better insight into what is going on in scripture. Number three, what made people think this information should be written down and is worth saving? 
every, th every single thing you guys write, is that worth saving? No. You guys might be great writers, but it's probably not worth saving. Every single thing that these guys wrote down in the Bible was not worth saving. There was a specific reason as to why these things were saved. And when you understand, understand why they were saved, then you can actually then better understand the last question. Is it helpful to me or not? When you understand the context of something, you can better understand how this applies to and how this affects your life. When context creates clarity, when we have a better understanding of scripture, we have a better understanding of the message that God is trying to present to us. And when we understand that message, we can better figure out how it applies to our lives. Maybe you guys are here and you have never picked up a Bible. Maybe you don't own a Bible. So if that's you, talk to either myself or one of the small group leaders and we have a Bible we will give to you tonight because we want to give you three th free things. Shirts, Bibles, all the stuff. So let us know, we will get you a Bible because we want you to see this incredible book, this love letter that God has written to you, even if it is difficult to understand. If we took the Bible seriously, even when things don't immediately make sense, we then have to figure out how that applies to our lives. But when we understand the context, we're able to apply it to our lives more immediately because it's spoken directly to us. So as we get ready to transition into small groups, I want you guys to think through what kind of context you need when it comes to how you understand the Bible. Let's pray. Holy Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have given it to us and that we have the means to understand it, even if it is confusing at times. God, I pray for our small groups as we go to them. I pray that we will be able to have a great conversation in our group and to really just get to know each other as we kick off this school year. In your name we pray. Amen.